Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. One of the most popular questions I get is, what is the best rep range? There's a lot of confusion about what's the best rep range, you know, and I'm pretty sure I've covered this in the past, but again, I'm going to try to do it in five minutes or less. All right, so first, what is a motor unit? Very simple. Number one, you have your brain. Number two, you have your brain cell, which is the neuron. And number three, you have the muscle fiber. Again, I'm leaving out a lot of details because I'm trying to make this simple for everyone to understand at the beginner level, right? So I'm going to leave out a lot of details. Your brain obviously sends signals through your muscle fibers telling them to contract, right? And that's what leads to muscle contraction. So what is the motor unit? The brain cell, right? The neuron and all the different muscle fibers that it attaches to. What are the low threshold motor units? Those are the ones that you use for everyday tasks, right? Low force, easy tasks, right? That's also why they don't grow a lot. That's why you don't grow from walking from walking every fucking day, right? Because most of the time, your brain is only recruiting the low threshold motor units, right? You don't, your brain doesn't need to recruit your high threshold motor units for you to walk, right? So when you're doing a basic, uh, easy task, when you're picking up a pen, picking up a cup of coffee, when you're beating your meat, all these low threshold tasks, your 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 brain is only going to recruit the low threshold motor units, right? The ones that activate, uh, you know, the uh, low threshold fibers, and that's why again, that's why you don't grow from walking every day. That's why you don't grow from opening the the refrigerator every day, right? Those are made for basic, low, easy tasks, right? In the Dragon Ball Z context, that's just Goku base form. Doesn't burn a lot of energy. Doesn't burn a lot of stamina. Right, but at the same time, it's not gonna get too much work done. Now you have the high threshold motor units, right? Those are the ones that actually uh, recruit the high threshold fibers, right? So for explosive tasks, when you're picking up heavy weights, you're doing something that's extremely hard. You're sprinting. You're doing. You're going for your one rep max. You know, when you're doing hard shit, right? That's when your brain kicks in. So see it as like a Saiyan scouter. Your brain uses the Saiyan scouter and it's looking at the the task you're about to perform. Right, and if the power level of that task is low, then it stays in base form. Okay, it's only going to recruit the low threshold fibers. But if your brain is like, "Holy shit!" You know, this task that I'm about to perform, or this task that I'm performing, is very hard. That's when the brain goes super saiyan, K you can, and starts recruiting those high threshold, um, uh, you know, fibers. And again, those are the ones that are responsible for most of your size gains. Right, but remember, they're only recruited. When you're doing a very hard task, just like Goku only goes Super Saiyan when he has to. Okay, now how do you recruit the high threshold motor units? Low, heavy reps, right? There's obviously three ways, right? I'm gonna leave out the fourth one. There's three, three top ways, right? Low reps on heavy ass weights. So if you're lifting anything less than your five rep max, right? Heavy as shit. Obviously, your body, can, you know, your brain cannot complete that task using the uh, low threshold motherfuckers, right? So it's gonna go Super Saiyan. It's gonna recruit those high threshold fibers that's why you get big from lifting heavy ass weights right second thing high reps to failure right those last few reps that you're post failure guess what your low threshold fibers are fatigued they can't produce enough force so your body kicks in goes super saiyan and starts recruiting the high threshold fibers that's why and again guys this is not bro science right this is a fact there are a ton a ton a ton of studies on this that's why you can get big doing high reps, high rep push-ups, high rep pull-ups, people doing calisthenics, high time and intentional work, right? That's why it gives you just as much size as lifting heavy because the first few reps obviously don't fucking matter, right? If you can do 20 push-ups, the first 5 to 10 push-ups, you're not growing from that, right? There's a lot of studies on this as well. But as you get close to failure, as those reps get fucking hard, that's when you, your, you know, your brain goes super sane. Right? And the last thing is, when you're doing reps, whenever the muscle is fatigued. Whenever the muscle is fatigued, not when your whole nervous system is fatigued. Because if you under-recover, right, your body's not going to go super saiyan if you under-recover. Right? In fact, that's why if you under-recover, you didn't sleep well, you didn't eat well, you might as well just stay home. Because your body's not going to recruit the high threshold fibers. So anyway, yeah. So reps when fatigued. So when you're doing uh, reps in a fatigued state, meaning the muscle has been fatigued. So that's why drop sets work just as much, and in many cases, more than normal uh, straight sets. Because after that first initial set in drop sets, your muscles are fatigued. So the following drop set after that, so when you're dropping that weight by 20% or whatever, your brain has to recruit high threshold fibers to get the job done because the low threshold ones got annihilated by the first set. Right? That's also why Katsu, blood flow restriction training, works so well, even though those guys are lifting 20% of their one rep max, which is extremely low weight. But studies after studies on trained and untrained people have shown that blood flow restriction training, even though you're using bitch weights, gives you just as much gains, and in some studies even more gains, 
And it's somebody lifting heavy ass weights. Right? Why? Because when the muscles fatigue on the blood flow restriction, guess what? Your body goes straight into super sand mode and starts recruiting those high threshold fibers. So those are the three ways to maximize the high threshold, you know, of fibers. Either you, you lift heavy ass weights, you know, powerlifting top, you know, style of training, whatever, uh, weighted stretch, all these things, or high reps to failure, calisthenics, high rep push ups, whatever, uh, rope press downs, doesn't matter. Or reps in the fatigue state. So drop sets, rest balls, blood flow restriction, all that shit. Pretty much hard, slow reps, grinder reps. That's what recruits the high threshold motor units. And remember, these are the only ones that significantly grow after training. Right? So the question, what is the best rep range? It doesn't matter what the best rep range is. That's why I keep telling you guys in the comment section, whether you're doing heavy weights, uh, high reps, it doesn't matter. As long as the reps are hard, close to failure, you don't, you don't have to go to complete failure, but close to failure, you're going to recruit those high threshold fibers. So that is the answer to what is the best rep range. That's why I always recommend, if I have to pick one, I pick the 6 to 8 rep range. Why? Because it's the best of both worlds. It's heavy enough so that I'm recruiting high threshold you know, motor units from the beginning. And it's also not so low that I'm going to snap my shit up or have to wait five minutes between sets to recover, right? Hope this answers your question. I'm hoping I was on the five minutes. Uh, comment below. Don't forget to thumb up the video and hit me up for coaching. I'm out.